Ensemble models can be any combination of machine learning algorithms, and they can be used to solve either classification or regression tasks. The most common one is the random forest, which uses a number of different decision trees, all based on different data. These act like votes, and so the overall prediction in this case would be not spam. The other common method is gradient boosting, and this is where the results of one decision tree are fed into the next one. Each model that we add gradually improves the predictions until finally we reach a final prediction. Empirically, ensemble models tend to add about 5% improved performance over standalone machine learning models. In earlier chapters, we covered supervised learning. And so here we're going to cover two of the most common use cases for unsupervised learning. And first, let's tackle clustering. So clustering is where we group data points who share similar characteristics. If you think of a data set here, what we're doing really is grouping observations or rows into clusters. So if we think of Netflix viewer data, Netflix might use an algorithm to place us customers into one of three groups. We might be binge watchers, Friday night watchers, or infrequent watchers. And by doing this, they may be able to fine tune their marketing or promotions for each one of those groups. There are two common techniques used here. One is k-means clustering, which is really helpful to identify groups and trends in large data sets. The second is hierarchical clustering, which is usually visualized as a dendrogram. In this example, we're looking at different ETFs. At the first split, we split ETFs into two groups of assets with similar return movements. As a result, one group contains commodity ETFs and the other group contains equity and bond ETFs. And we keep splitting each one of those groups up until the subgroups only contain similar characteristics. The second unsupervised learning technique I want to look at is variable reduction. In our earlier example of company valuation, we took a set of 50 features and reduced it to 10. And importantly, we said the benefits of doing this was reduced processing time, reduced storage requirements and costs, and hopefully improved results of analysis. And so in contrast to clustering, where we were clustering rows, Variable reduction algorithms are designed to reduce the number of features, which means variable reduction is identifying the most important columns in our data set. In general, unsupervised learning models don't give us as many specific answers as supervised models, but they typically give us a stepping stone to help us in the right direction with further analysis. Let's take a look at reinforcement learning, which is another branch of machine learning where bots learn how to successfully navigate scenarios by repeating them over and over again. Supposing a bot is learning how to complete a maze. This is admittedly a simplistic example, but let's start with this one. So attempt A didn't go so well, but the computer will never make this mistake again. In attempt two, the bot again learns about a second dead end. After a number of attempts, the bot understands the best route through the maze and will be successful 100% of the time. Let's consider a more complex example. Suppose a bot is asked to play a game of chess or Go. There are clear rules which the bot or agent must follow. The clear outcomes are defined as a reward for the bot, win, lose or draw. And there are also unknowns in this situation, including what the opponent will do that's a change to the environment that the bot is experiencing. After just one game, the agent would understand very little. But after playing the game hundreds of thousands of times, or even millions of times, it will start to understand what moves are likely to guide it towards a winning result. There's three reasons why computers are well suited to reinforcement learning. The first is that they have no memory loss. By storing data about previous scenarios, computers are capable of remembering all the details about all previous scenarios without experiencing that loss. Second, computers hold no recent memory biases. Us humans are naturally biased in many ways. We underestimate unlikely outcomes, and we tend to place more weight on more recent memories. Computers do not hold these biases. 
Finally, computational superiority. Training yourself to recognize patterns over a million repetitions is no mean feat. There's no way as humans we could remember and calculate statistical parameters over so many games, but computers can solve the computational problem and consequently learn from vast data sets. Reinforcement learning is an area of research that's taking on more and more complex tasks. Neural networks and deep learning are also part of machine learning. Neural networks are inspired by the structures of neurons in our brain, and they consist of nodes organized into layers. First, we have the input layer, which receives the input data. In image recognition, for example, each input node might represent a pixel from an x-ray. The output layer is where a prediction is made, so we might have two or more classes here. In between, we have the hidden layers, which is where the data is combined, transferred, where complex calculations are done, and possibilities are statistically considered. All of this computational effort results in the predictions we see in the output layer. Don't worry about understanding how this works for now. Neural networks are a challenging concept to understand, and for that reason, they're often referred to as a black box type model. The concept of deep learning is conceptually an extension of a neural network. A deep learning model is typically less reliant on humans to help it through the training process and may be able to train itself. There are already many applications of neural networks, not just limited to image recognition. Collaborative filtering could be used to make recommendations to Netflix users based on the choices of users with similar tastes. Pattern and image recognition might be extended into situational and object recognition in autonomous cars, with deep learning used to prescribe the action the car should take. Anomaly detection might be able to detect security threats across the internet. The vast amounts of data lend itself well to these neural networks. Rule-based models are used to automatically follow rules, often at speeds that a human just wouldn't be capable of. Let's look at one really simple example, and a more complex one. We might set up a rule to move our known family email addresses might get moved to our family folder, whilst all the others go to our inbox. So that's a basic rule-based model. At the other end of the spectrum, let's think about algorithmic trading for a second. This is a classic example of rule-based models, where traders used to make trades manually, minute by minute. Algorithmic traders are able to trade by the millisecond. If you can be the first to act on new information, that puts you at an advantage. Algorithms trade based on pre-programmed rules, and so they make decisions when conditions are met. The stakes are so high in this world of high-frequency trading that every millisecond counts. In both these examples, computers are simply following instructions, programmed using code. So the underlying principles of rule-based models are fairly simple, even if the consequences can be very different. Monte Carlo simulation is an elegant statistical technique used to quantify risk in forecasting models. The first step is to understand how the relevant variables move over time, and we do this by looking at past events. The Monte Carlo simulation then uses that to project forwards a view of possible future events. Thinking about equity portfolio valuation, we might have some historical data showing how the value of that portfolio has changed over time. We can even describe the nature of those previous changes the mean of daily returns at 0.13% and the standard deviation of daily returns at 0.014%. And so with that information, we can start to project forward a future scenario that exhibits those same characteristics. But obviously we can't rely on just one random scenario. So instead we repeat this process many, many times up into the tens of thousands and even more. And so through this process of randomness, we can start to gain some useful insights and to summarize the range of future possibilities using confidence intervals. This might help us quantify the amount of risk that our portfolio or company is exposed to. 
This is a really elegant technique applicable to many different business and finance scenarios. I encourage you to take a look at our Monte Carlo course, which is part of our BEDA certification. Finally, there are all sorts of other statistical models which are used to derive insights from a variety of datasets. Take A-B testing, which is used to explicitly measure the difference in performance between two different versions of something. In this example, we've got two different versions of a crypto trading app. The design team have been testing which version of the app makes it easier for customers to trade. After a month of collecting data, we can see that version 1 has an average transaction value of $50, and we can see the distribution there. App version 2 has a wider distribution, but its average transaction value is $70. So the question is, which app is better? Well, at a glance, it certainly seems like App 2 does a better job of facilitating trading. But we need to ask, but we need to ask a lot more questions to make sure that these results are valid. Questions we might ask are, did any other business factors affect the results? And therefore, was it a fair test? Are there any unmeasured consequences that we haven't captured here? For example, does App 2 come across too salesy and therefore is going to damage our reputation in the longer term? And finally, are the findings statistically significant? And so all of these questions are going to help us answer this App 1 versus App 2 question in the context of the business scenario.